Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Beef Up Front podcast here on PickSwap Media. This is your host, Ryan Coyle, back for Fantasy Football Weekly Show, the week four edition. Uh, we are now 3-0 and in terms of our start and sit list after week three just finished up last night. Uh, we've now outscored the sit list each week here on the Fantasy Football Show, this week by 26 points, so another good week. Um, had some, I had a few misses and definitely had a few guys on the, the start list that underperformed and had a few guys on the sit list that kind of popped off, uh, but still outscoring again, this time by 26 points, 115 points on the start list, 89 on the sit list. Another really good week here. So the goal each and every week is to give you better starts than the sits. And that's what we've been doing here at beef up front week two. We out, did it by over a hundred. So we're going to become a, a go-to fantasy football weekly show for you. If you like to do Daily fantasy, your season long, kind of everything we touch on here. So uh, just to recap week three, like I said, we the start list had 115 points, sit list 89. So we outscored them by 26 points there. Uh, we had Kirk Cousins as a start. He finished uh, 10th in fantasy for quarterbacks this week. Joe Burrow, we had him on there. He finished fifth. Those are two good hits right there. Miles Sanders, he was a mess. We had him as a start. He uh, finished 51st this week with only five points. Cordell Patterson, a great hit there, sixth. Best running back this past week with 22 points. Garrett Wilson received for the Jets. A uh, bit of a miss there, but still not a terrible game. Finished 43rd amongst receivers this week with 12 points. Drake London, another rookie receiver for the Falcons. He had a pretty solid week. Finished in 31st with 14 points. Gerald Everett uh, struggled a bit, but so did the entire Chargers team this week. He finished 33rd with four points, so a miss there for sure. Pat Fryermuth finished 25th with six points. Uh, I guess you could say that's a miss there, but still six better than once you get out of those top like two or three tight ends, it's really unpredictable for the rest of the guys in fantasy. It's super hard each week. Uh, and then Ravens D finished fifth with 11 points. So that's a really good start there. Then we go to the sit list. Uh, you had Aaron Rodgers at Tampa Bay. He finished 13th, 17 points. So if you, if you're playing 12 team league, you know, that's one of the guys who would be kind of a backup quarterback for you. So I, th I consider that a win. Russell Wilson versus San Francisco. Uh, he was finished 29th, only nine points. He's continued to struggle. Travis Etienne finished 28th as a running back with 10 points. Zeke finished 16th with 14 points as the other running back. Uh, Terry McLaurin, I guess you could say a bit of a miss here as well as with Zeke. Uh, Terry McLaurin 24th this week with 16 points. Watching the Eagles game, I didn't really even remember making that much of a, a difference in that one, but Darius Slay was out for a little bit down the stretch so that he could have got some garbage time yards. Uh, Rashad Bateman in there as well, uh, finished 68th this week with only five points. So a big hit there after he had a really nice week, uh, first few weeks of the season. Dawson Knox, a good hit at the tight end, been really good with the tight end so far. He finished 22nd with six points. Cole Komet finished 27th with six points. So another bad performance from him. And then we had Rams D at Cardinals. Rams D finished 15th, only getting six points. So another good week here. Start outscoring the sit. We moved to three and zero. We're looking to go seventeen or eighteen and zero for you guys this year, as long as we go go for this show. So we'll get into the week four edition now. Just like every week, we'll run through the start list first and the sit list, giving a little tidbit on why I like each guy uh, or why I dislike him for this week. Uh, should be another quick fifteen or minute episode or so, trying to get you all this fantasy knowledge in that short condensed time. So we'll start off with the start list at the top with the quarterback spot. We're going to go with. Jared Goff uh, for the Lions against the Seahawks this week. Last week, I was really high on some Falcons players, and Marcus Mariota was able to go out and have a good week against the Seahawks. I think Jared Goff is able to go out there and do it this week. Seahawks have a really young secondary. Jamal Adams out now for the season as well. So Quandre Diggs is really the only reliable guy in the back end there. They're relying on a lot of young guys. This, this is kind of a rebuild season. I think guys like DJ Chark, uh, TJ Hawkinson, Amon Ross St. Brown should be able to have a nice day here. Um, leading to good, a good overall performance from Jared Goff. Then we're going to go, this is a gut feeling, pure gut feeling on this one. Some people might raise their eyebrows at this one after the Broncos have started out stellar on defense throughout the season. But I'm going to go with quarterback Derek Carr versus the Broncos. Raiders go into this game 0-3. They go 0-4, pretty much kiss their season goodbye. A lot, I could see a lot of guys, you know, just mail it in at that point. He needs to go out there and prove it this week. He has... Hopefully getting Hunter Renfro back, but when when healthy, he's got, I think, the best pass-catching trio in the league. You have Devontae Adams, a do-it-all receiver, uh, Darren Waller, the mismatch nightmare, especially down in the red zone, and then Hunter Renfro, one of the best slot uh, receivers, one of the more shifty guys in the league. He needs to go out there and have a big week this week, a big prove-it week, because they did just bring in a whole new coaching staff, a whole new 
front office. If he doesn't have a good year this year, they could easily look to move him and try and get someone in the draft next season. This is a big week for him to kind of save the season, get things back going on track. I think he feels the pressure this week. I think he goes out and has a good performance, even against a very good Broncos defense. I think Derek Carr is going to be relied on a lot. Josh Jacobs, um, the running back for the Raiders, they are the Broncos currently are the first ranked team against fantasy football running backs this year. So expect a heavy dosage of the pass is all I could say. I think they're going to go out there, sling the ball all around the yard, use all those weapons that they have on offense, and Derek Carr is a good week. We are the running backs now, Jamal Williams versus Seahawks. DeAndre Swift most likely going to miss a few weeks. Jamal Williams been having a DeAndre Swift fantasy owner. I hate Jamal Williams. He's been taking a bunch of touchdowns away throughout these first few weeks for DeAndre Swift. He's been like my worst enemy, but now he's able to carry the lion's share this week and, and probably going forward for the next few weeks. And Cordell Patterson had a really nice game against the Seahawks defense last week, over 100 yards and a touchdown. So I like Jamal Williams to continue his uh, good fantasy success from earlier in the season. Second running back, we're going to go with Bears running back Khalil Herbert. He finished as the number one fantasy football running back last week. If you're watching this before waivers go through, maybe you might still be able to snag him. He plays against uh, a Giants defense. David Montgomery most likely out this week for the Bears. Bears have really shown that they're going to be committed to running the football and playing defense all year, taking the ball out of Justin Fields' hands at all costs. Um, Giants let up over 100 combined rushing yards to Zeke and Tony Pollard the other night on Monday Night Football. I think Khalil Herbert continues his hot play. Now we go to the receivers, wide receiver Brandon Cooks versus the Chargers. J.C. Jackson most likely going to be out again. This whole Chargers defense already banged up. I could see this being an ugly game and potentially the Texans maybe even pulling it out. Um, but with, with some guys down on that defense, especially in the secondary with J.C. Jackson, I like Brandon Cooks too. As always, if he's healthy, he's, he finds ways to produce. I like him to go out there and have a good game this week. Next wide receiver, we're going to go Michael Thomas versus the Vikings, the 9.30 a.m. Eastern time game on Sunday morning in London. The Vikings defense just really struggles to cover. Uh, the, they should have lost last week against the Detroit Lions. Eagles kind of exploited them in the passing game as well. I think Michael Thomas has a not a vintage Michael Thomas game, but like a 90% of the old Michael Thomas type thing where we see maybe eight catches for 90 yards and a touchdown. Kind of like what Amon Ra St. Brown's been doing over the past eight or nine weeks of his NFL uh, career. Just one of those type games where nothing flashy, not many big explosive plays, but reliably catching the ball, uh, getting an opening. It's a banged up Viking secondary that's not that talented to begin with. I think he has a nice day. And if you're looking for another guy that you might be able to get on the cheap for like a daily stream, look at Chris Olave too. Had 147 yards last week, emerging as a very, very good young player. We go to the tight end, Zach Ertz at the Panthers. He start, he's just been real rock solid to start off the year. So without DeAndre Hopkins in the lineup, he's still going to be getting a bunch of targets in the passing game. Uh, the tight ends, like I kind of said, when once you get past the top guys with Waller, Kittle, uh, Pitts, Travis Kelsey, Mark Andrews, the guys that you have to start each week, the guys at kind of the rest are hit or miss. I mean, you could throw Goddard in there as well. He's had a nice start to the year. Hawkinson is, is inconsistent. But guys like Ertz is right in that ballpark of, all right, am I starting him this week or do I have another guy maybe with a little bit more upside? I'm just going to continue to roll with Ertz as he's just a real reliable option. Next tight end we're going to go to, I think he was the 13th ranked tight end this week on Fantasy Pros. Uh, but that's David Njoku of the Browns at the Falcons. Jacoby Brissett has been impressive so far. Not putting up the biggest numbers, the most eye-popping stats, but still, he's had a, a nice little start to the season watching him against that Really nice Steelers defense as well. He was able to zip some balls in and had some really nice passes in that game. Uh, the Falcons are weak in the middle of the field. I think Njoku could have a nice performance in this one. And when you go to the, the defense for streaming, uh, or even if you're just uh, – this this you have a, two defenses, you're not sure this week. This defense I love this week, and that's the Packers versus the Patriots. Mac Jones out. The offense wasn't good to begin with. You're getting Brian Hoyer now. I think that they could hold them to under seven points maybe. Uh at most 10 to 13, I think the Packers defense might be the best in the NFC, contending for the best in the entire NFL up there with like the Broncos, um, the Bucks defense as well. Eagles have looked really good over the past few weeks as well. Um, but the Packers versus Patriots this week is a layup, especially if you have a streaming defense. I love them this week, even though they might cost you a little bit of coin. It could be worth it. Uh, so just to run back through the sit or the start list again for this week. We have Jared Goff versus Seahawks, Derek Carr versus the Broncos, Jamal Williams versus Seahawks, Khalil Herbert at the Giants, Brandon Cooks versus the Chargers, Michael Thomas versus the Vikings, Zach Ertz at the Panthers, David Njoku at the Falcons, and Packers defense versus the Patriots. 
And now we move on to the sit list. We're going to start off with Kirk Cousins, quarterback for the Vikings versus Saints in that London game. Saints still have a really nice defense, despite their uh, their bit of their woes on offense so far. A strong defense, a strong back end to cover, a strong pass rush up front that I think could take uh, a part a bit of this Vikings kind of suspect offensive line. There's just there's just better options out there this week. Next quarterback on our sit list, we're going to stick with Russell Wilson back to back weeks. He has the Raiders this week. Not a very strong defense of secondary, but still, Russell Wilson, you can't trust him in fantasy right now, even when guys and the receivers are open. He's just been missing guys point blank. Kind of got some momentum going last week in the fourth quarter of that game against the 49ers, but still, I'm not trusting Russell Wilson this week, especially if you're investing in him for a, for a daily fantasy team. It's just too much unpredictability right now. you got to hope for him if you're like a season-long owner that him and the receivers uh, kind of are able to pick it up in that offense as a whole. But still, not trusting Russell Wilson this week at the Raiders even. Um, uh, until he proves otherwise, you, you can't put him in your lineup, I think. We are the running backs. We're going to go with Damian Harris at the Packers. I think the Packers are going to get up early and often this one, kind of force Brian Hoyer to throw. Uh, really just stack the box against Ramondre Stevenson. You could throw him on this list as well uh, with Damian Harris. But just this Packers defensive front is nasty. They got good linebackers as well. Really just going to try and contain that running game and sell all out, make Brian Hoyer and their suspect wide receivers beat you. Next running back, we're going to go with Saints running back Alvin Kamara versus the Vikings in that London game as well. I think the big thing with him through, he only played two games. He missed week two with the rib injury. But I think he's missing Sean Payton and the creative ways he used to get uh, Alvin Kamara the ball. He used to split him out wide. Uh, he used to throw a lot of screens to him. He just was, as as we know, one of the better offensive coaches of the past 10 to 20 years in the entire NFL. He goes out the window. It, it, Jameis Winston at quarterback now, now Drew Brees. It's just, it's been a different dynamic for Alvin Kamara. He's not looking like the same explosive self he used to be. He did have five touchdowns against the Vikings on Christmas Day last year or two years ago, I believe it was. I don't think he replicates a performance here, so I'm going to have him on my sit list this week, but that would be kind of funny if he did, uh, did go back out there and have that five-touchdown performance. Receiver, we got DK Metcalf at the Lions. I've had Tyler Lockett on here a few times. We're going to go with DK Metcalf now. Jeff Okuda coming back from that Achilles injury, looking like that top five overall pick that he was drafted to be. He's had a nice start to this year, really shut down some receivers. Justin Jefferson wasn't able to get going last week. Geno Smith, I think his job might be on the line. They might go to Drew Locke if he continues to struggle after that week one performance, but I'm just not, I'm not believing consistently in starting DK Metcalf or Tyler Lockett each week. So this week we're going to put DK Metcalf on that list with Geno Smith still throwing the football. Next wide receiver, Allen Robinson at the 49ers. Uh, I'm almost ready to admit I was wrong on this one. I'm going to give him another week or two, but he was a guy I was really high on. I thought coming in two new offense led by Sean McVay with Matt Stafford thrown, having Cooper cup on the other side as well. I thought he was going to be able to just, really thrive in this offense and he's been a a, a bit of a no-show uh, i don't even think a bit is is a good word a major no-show through two out of three weeks week two he had a pretty solid performance but last week really struggled week one complete no-show only having one catch so this was a a guy who i was really high on coming into the year i'm fading him now he been on my bench i'm still not releasing him yet maybe another week or so but he's just not looking like the Allen robinson that i thought we would get and against the 49ers defense that has been really strong through the first three weeks. Uh, definitely keep it on the bench there. We stick with another Ram here, tight, tight end Tyler Higby at the 49ers. You have Fred Warner in the middle, one of the better linebackers in the league. Tyler Higby doesn't usually have much success against the 49ers. 49ers have the Rams, Sean McVay's number for the most part. So we're going to keep Higby on the bench. We're also going to keep Bill's tight end Dawson Knox on the bench at the Ravens. Ravens are another team where a lot of good defensive players on paper, but they've kind of struggled out of the gate. I think they might be adjusting to their – their new defensive coordinator scheme and just kind of finding their way with that. But Dawson Knox has been a bit of a no-show as well, just like Allen Robinson has been. After getting this big new contract extension, hasn't done much. Patrick Queen, a good linebacker in the middle of the field. They have good versatile safeties. I think Dawson Knox kind of is minimized as well in this game. And then when we look to the defense for this one, we're going to sit the Broncos at the Raiders. Just another thing I was talking about earlier with, with the gut feeling with Derek Carr, some of those Raiders receivers, they know kind of desperation time. Games on the line, season on the line. We need to win this one. I think Broncos could be in for a long day on Sunday. And the Broncos aren't playing that desperate anymore because they were fortunate enough to win that game on Sunday night against the 49ers. Now, with the Chargers injuries and their struggles early on, Kansas City losing to the Colts last week, Broncos are tied right there for first place. Raiders, if they find a way to win this game, are right back in it. A lot of motivation this week. So 
We're going to sit the Broncos defense this week at the Raiders. Uh, so just running through the sit list again, we got Kirk Cousins versus Saints, Russell Wilson at the Raiders, Damian Harris at the Packers, Alvin Kamara versus the Vikings, DK Metcalf at the Lions, Allen Robinson at the 49ers, Tyler Higby at the 49ers, Dawson Knox at the Ravens, and Broncos defense at the Raiders. But that'll do it for the week four Beef Up Front Fantasy Football Show, Stardom Sit'em. Uh, Three and zero so far with our start list outscoring our sit list. So make sure to like, subscribe, share, tell your friends to listen in. We've we've been hot here. So one, I won myself a few fantasy fan, daily fantasy uh, contests on DraftKings as well. So looking forward to continuing pushing out this content and hopefully helping some of you guys out. If you have any questions about your lineups or anything, just drop them in the comment section and we'll be sure to get back to you. But thank you everyone for listening and we will talk next week. Mm-hmm.